Hey, my name is Crispina French, and promoting creative textile reuse is my jam. I am an OG textile alchemist, worked my way through art school making ragamuffins from thrift store sweaters way back in the 1980s. That college side hustle grew into a full-fledged business, and here I am today to show you how to do it too. Stick around for all the things helping to navigate both the chaotic and dreamy chapters of building your profitable textile upcycling business. We'll talk material sourcing, business savvy, product development, marketing, and self-care. Gloss over the hard parts? Not here. Experience, lessons, and know-how. Deep dive into the struggles, wins, and rewards of running your sustainable textile upcycling business. Think of this as your favorite craft class mixed with environmental business school. Are you ready to be inspired, energized, and supported? This is the Rags to Riches Textile Upcycling Podcast. This episode of the Rags to Riches Textile Upcycling Podcast is brought to you by Old Tone Root Music Festival at Cool Whisper Farm in North Hillsdale, New York on July 29th through 31st, 2022. Submerge yourself in the magic of traditional mountain fiddling, bluegrass, hot swing, classic country, brass, and Cajun music. It's a family-friendly full camping festival with kids' activities, dance tent, workshops, and contests. Featuring Hudson Valley farm-to-table food, libations, and exceptional national and regional acts on three stages. Dancers, pickers, and music lovers of all ages are welcome. Camp all weekend or come by for the day. Get your tickets at www.oldtonemusicfestival.com and visit our show notes page for this episode at Rags to Riches Textile Upcycling Podcast.com for links and more information. Today, I'm super excited to introduce you to Alex Joyle. She lives up in Brattleboro, Vermont, and she has a super cool company called Joyle Tea. You can find her at joyltea.com. I'm going to bring her in right now. Hey, Alex. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you really well. And um, I'm really excited to have you um, help me kick this podcast off. I'm, I have been dreaming about a podcast for such a long time, and it's always been kind of thing like, oh yeah, you know, whatever. And then I'll talk to somebody and I'll say, oh, you know, that takes so much time and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like in this place where it doesn't matter how much time it takes. I just am really excited about promoting textile reuse, recycling, upcycling, conscious textile consumption, and the people who are doing that out in the world. And just the creative geniuses that are figuring out ways to make amazing value added things for living um, from things that, you know, might've been thought of as trash, right? So welcome. I love it. Thank you. Thanks for yeah. having me. Yeah, you're welcome. And um, could you just give the listeners a quick, like Alex Joyle introduction? Sure. So, um, so I am Alex Joyle and I currently live in Brattleboro, Vermont, which is in the um, southern part of Vermont. We moved here a few years ago from San Antonio um, and we are originally from New Hampshire. And I started, uh, let's see, I started quilting when I was 12 and I'm 44 now. And I started um, by making quilts out of upcycled clothing because that was what I had. And I, um, I really loved different textiles and things like that. So. I have been quilting pretty much ever since and sewing. And um, and that has led me to where I am today, where I own a company called Joyalty. And we operate out of Brattleboro, Vermont. And we, um, let's see, we have children's clothing that is upcycled from um, reused clothing. And we also have uh, memory blankets that are not just t-shirt memory blankets, but we use all sorts of textiles and garments and things sent in from our clients. So, so you wait, let me back you up a minute. When you say we have, like, that's your business, right? And like, that's how you have, you found yourself in this way. Like you make your money. This is what you do, right? This is what I do. Yep. Yeah. And um, I, um, Alex was one of our amazing presenters at Rags to Riches Textile Upcycling Summit last April. So I got to learn a little bit about her that way. And then, you know, just, just connected. Like, I just, I like so honor what you're doing. And I feel like 
Thank so you make memory blankets. So people can go on your website, joyalty.com, and they can choose like the size, am I right? Like, how does that work? How does it, how does your process actually take place? That's right. So I will, I'll back up a little bit. Um, when I graduated from the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City, I had my degree, my degree is in textile development and marketing with a emphasis on sustainability. And how also, cool is that? Like, oh my God. It was amazing. And that actually stemmed from my love of fabrics. And so um, I started to kind of go down the rabbit hole of sustainability in regards to textiles and fabrics, manufacturing, dyeing, growing, um, and everything in regards to textiles. So I found I had started at FIT 10 years earlier in, um, in fashion buying and merchandising and then ended up moving to Europe and, you know, life happened. But um, when I went back, I really wanted to focus on textile development, which is the actual manufacturing of textiles, specifically because I wanted to start um, an upcycled quilt company. And I wanted to make sure that I understood how upcycled fabrics behave with one another. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so, so you're a planner. So you, yeah. We're kind well, of, and it was it, yeah. it's something that I was really, really interested in. I love going to thrift stores and looking at fabrics. Yeah. I it's love a like candy store. Right, yeah. right. And I'm not that interested in the fit of garments when I go to thrift stores. I am absolutely looking at the fabrics the garments are made from. Yeah. And I've always been that way. So it was just kind of a natural progression for me that I would seek out a school that I actually had started at um, that had textile development as a major. Yeah. How cool. That's, it's so funny, Alex. Like, honestly, I never thought about how fabrics behave next to each other. Right. Until right. I started doing it, you know, and then I learned, so our, our learning processes are different, which is just another cool thing. So once you graduated, you started this beautiful high-end quilt company, if I'm right. Correct. And I, um, I moved into an old mill in Dover, New Hampshire, and I started making um, couture upcycled quilts and they were heirloom quality. So I had a long arm quilter that I worked with and we started making these really beautiful high end quilts, but I was focusing on the textiles. So I was sourcing all of the used textile textiles and knits and wovens and everything in between. And, um, one day I had contacted New Hampshire Chronicle, which is a really popular, uh, TV show in New Hampshire. And they focus and spotlight artisans and business owners and things like that. And they actually came out to my studio and did a really long interview with me. Um, that was a big deal at the time, but it yeah. actually translated to the audience that I was a memory quilter. And huh. then all of a sudden the floodgates opened and everyone started contacting me to make memory quilts um, for people that have passed on from their clothing. And so that kind of, that was in around uh, 2009 and that kind of pushed me in the direction that I'm in now. That is, isn't it interesting yeah. how things just come along, like just get thrown up in your path without even like any kind of foresight or thought right. or like plan. And it's just like, it changes your direction, right? Like how, right. like they, there's been th um, opportunities that have kind of plopped themselves in my path too. And I'm always, I look back and I'm like, that was kind of magical. How right. Cool. right. How cool. So now that's kind of like what you, that's your, I mean, you make the kids clothing, which is separate, kind of like a separate offering, but the, yep. the blankets and the quilts that you make are things that are really like they, they capture an essence of someone, you know, an event or a person or a, a celebration of some kind. How, right. Is that how it works? Right. So another thing um, for me, another layer of this is affordability. And I know um, I love I love, I love that. Thank yes. You. Well, you know, and it's the type of thing where I feel like art should be affordable. Clearly not all art. And I feel like artists should be able to set their own prices based on, you know, whatever it is they want to set them on. But for me, I feel like um, making things affordable and accessible for more people is what I'm interested in. So being able to make a quilt line or a blanket line like I'm doing now that is very affordable because we have dropped off a lot of the process. So it's not, we're not quilting 
the actual blankets. We're not having to go to a third party to use their long arm quilting. We're not using a batting. We're simply using a layer of textiles put on top of a layer of medium pile fleece. Yeah. And then we're stitching around, flipping it inside out and finishing the blanket. And it's making these blankets more accessible for a larger audience. And they are blankets basically made from whatever it is that you want to remember from the clothing that you have for, you know, t-shirts from running races, or I just made a NASCAR blanket for someone from all their NASCAR t-shirts and wow. you know, concert t-shirts and um, sports jerseys. I have a blanket right now that is all sports jerseys. So, yeah. Um, so, I mean, what a, what a great, great idea. I just love it. And I think that the, one of the things that really resonated with me the first time I met you and learned about your business was the affordability factor. Like, you know, to make an offering that's handmade bespoke for that specific person, right. And have it be something that, you know, isn't something that's just for the the one percent, right? Like it's right, right. What, and to think, you know, it, one of the things that I've run across on my textile upcycling journey is that doing that's really hard. Mm-hmm. It's, you have to be a very like you know, people oftentimes think like the creativity in our jobs has to do with product making, which of course it does. Mm-hmm. But to think of the way, like to to arrive at the place where you have found, um takes a lot of ingenuity and just real desire to, um, to find your, you know, set your goal, get to it. And then, you know, have the process in place that supports that is just really, that's a lot of creative thinking. And I feel like um, it, it's a really nice thing to be able to offer the world because I think oftentimes people, and I would imagine that you do a lot of educating, oftentimes people just assume, oh, if it's handmade, one of a kind, I can't afford it. Right. I get that question a lot, especially on TikTok. People are like, well, how much does this cost? And what are your prices? And we're, you know, I'm, I'm really transparent about my prices, right? When you go on my website, everything's there. And my memory blankets start at $80 for a four foot by four foot, uh, lap blanket, which is, which is wild. So, but it It is wild. It is wild, Alex. That's amazing. (laughs) Good but job. we can make it happen. So, you know, and it, and it definitely works. And also another component of that is my husband is a process engineer. So he has basically spent his life going through different processes of different businesses and companies and trying to streamline manufacturing and streamlining their process to have minimal waste and minimal time. That's so cool. Waste. And so we've really been able to, like, for example, with the upcycled pants, go through the process and figure out a way to be able to make them in a short amount of time. And then that saves money. And then, you, then yes. And then of course that translates into um, affordability for right. um, your market. That's, that's just right. really cool. Right. Wow. Congratulations. Cause I feel like um, that, you know, one of the things that, um, well, one of the things that we all do as textile upcyclers is a lot of educating, right? Like we, you know, we, what's that made out of? How do you do it? And then, you know, initially when I first started back in the day, it was, it was kind of the primary part of my job. Right. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, you know, your level of education is, is such a refreshing addition to the circle because I, I do feel like, you know, oftentimes people imagine that, like I said earlier, you know, if it's, it's going to be too expensive and then once they kind of get it, like, you're like, you're like the gateway. Recycler. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Which and- is awesome. Because really, once you, you know, once you make a purchase of something that is like really beautifully made and, and designed to last a long while and, and meaningful, it kind of reminds you of the options, right? So you could go and buy something that's really inexpensive and have to replace it frequently, or you could spend, uh, you know, five or six or 10 times as much money and get something like a pair of jeans that might last you for 20 years. Right. And, you know, if you do the math, the 20 year option is really w- the way to go. And then you consider our environmental impact that, um, which is my real passion, right? Like I come to this, like, yes, I love to make things. I I'm a very creative thinker. I'm very visual, but the bottom line for me is, how can I make my human impact on the environment as gentle as possible? And, you know, living in the world that we live in today, like, you know, no loincloths involved. I'm going to wear shoes. 
Right. You know? And um, realistic. Yes. You know, yeah. And you know, I, I, yeah. So, so I just wonder, like, I've been doing a lot of kind of introspection and thinking about like, why do I do that? And why, you know, how did I get there? Like, what, what, why is that? So, how did I arrive at that being so important to me? And I wonder if you could just share a little bit about what your kind of baseline, what drives you, what really makes you want to do what you do. And, you know, what's your big why, Alex? So my big why in the beginning um, truly was to be able to um, have a business where I could just create it for my outlet, but also generate a revenue. I needed to um, be a stay-at-home mom to be with my kids because I was an older mom and I wanted to be able to make money. And really, when you start looking at manufacturing, for example, um, and you're looking at a kid's product like leggings. To be able to have them manufactured for you, you have to go into this world of you know massive manufacturing where it's a lot of investment. You have to buy, put a lot of money into product. You know, there's a lot that goes into being able to just start up a clothing company, even as a small business. And so, I really wanted to avoid that and start something with minimal to no investment. I had sewing machines. Um, I just started cutting up clothing. And then it kind of turned into this thing where I really loved being able to just have everything different and unique. Right. And that was the big why for me was also, you know, the environmental impact, being able to just use what is already there. But also my kids started getting older and I started realizing that they had these little personalities that were nothing like I thought they would be like. And they were nothing like their friends, you know, and their mm -hmm. friends weren't like their other friends and children have such unique personalities. And I feel like we get into this, this um, kind of a time suck where we go shopping, right? And you think just like the big box brand, you know, you go to yeah. Aldi or you go to Target to get kids clothes. Yeah. And the reality is, is it all, you, you go to daycare or whatever, and all the kids look the same, you right. know, you go to the park and they're all wearing the same, you know, things from wherever. So that really became important to me, creating kids clothes that were unique and different. And, you know, the same amount of effort as it would have taken for me to buy bolts of Jersey knit fabric, you know, and make 25 pairs of the same pants. Um, right. I really wanted to be able to provide items. And then when I got into dyeing, that was another whole thing, you know, having all these beautiful dyes and rainbows and earth tones, um, being able to create children's clothing on a budget, but really having them all different. It's so cool. Them. You know, yeah. it's just, it's so, I, I love to be reminded of all the amazing, like I call it an infinite circle of wins, mm -hmm. right? Like textile upcycling is an infinite circle of wins because there's right. nothing about it that's not good, you know? Right. And you can always, for example, for me, when I source fabrics or source clothing to use for fabrics, the excess that I have, I have people that take my scraps, people that take my tiny scraps, and then I have people that take my bigger scraps, you know, yeah. different companies. I have a, a print guy here in town and there's an automotive guy here in town. And yeah. um, there's another upcycler that uses my teeny weeny scraps that I, you know, get boxes of and send them to her. So um, it's really amazing once you start spider webbing and branching out into different um, with different artisans, you really can use every little bit, the buttons, the zippers, right? The collars, everything yeah. can be reused, which is yeah. It's so cool. And then you have friends. You meet right. people who have a similar passion to yours that want to use those little tiny bits or the automotive guy is maybe where you take your car or, you know, it's just like, right. it just, there's so many, the spider web thing is a really nice um, analogy for me. Cause it's just like, it's, that's exactly what it is. It's like this woven together web of connection and uh, kind of as, as symbiosis, right? Like everybody there's, there's nothing that's um, not, awesome about it. And it's every day I get reminded of, of new spins on that, um, that vibe. So yeah, right. thanks for that reminder. That's so cool. So, um, you, we were talking a little bit earlier about the super cool program that you've got going on. Um, talk a little bit about what you're doing with the kids at the school. Well, so, um, let's see, my kids now are 10 and eight and they have been sewing since they were babies. <laughs> and um, my daughter is actually right now in Alaska and she is on a ski jumping camp trip with her dad. 
And um, she wanted to go on this trip. It's like a once in a lifetime trip for her being a, a, a junior ski jumper here in Vermont. And um, it was not in our summer budget. So in order to make that happen, she started sewing and selling teddy bears made from Cantha quilts, which are really beautiful upcycled um, quilts that are upcycled to begin with. And then she cut them into bears and sold them. So she was able to fund her entire trip to Alaska with my husband based on her selling these bears. So at the age of 10, at the age of 10. And so um, we really started talking this summer earlier um, about doing sewing classes at her elementary school, because a lot of her friends were really interested in doing what she was doing. And of course, you know, kids always want this idea, right, where they're making something or selling something and having their own money, especially elementary kids. You yep. know, the, the idea of making their own thing and selling it is kind of amazing to them. So um, my daughter is going to help me and my son this fall, and we are going to be running a sewing program at their elementary school and seeing where that goes. But we're writing a little curriculum and we're going to start with upcycled memory blankets because you know, it's relatively um, cheap to manufacture because everybody has T-shirts, you know, and they yep, they yep. out pairs and, you know, so straight lines. Yep. So great way to start. And you can. Yeah. So it's it's kids love it. I um I, I love um to watch those light bulbs turn on. Right. Like all of a sudden they're like, oh, my gosh. And they the opportunities just like you can watch them explode in their heads. It's just so cool. Exactly. And the thing is, is that sewing is so incredibly important. And it's something that like, we've all said it for years, you know, that sewing is that is, you know, not being taught so much anymore. And I remember our, our old school in Texas, they started taking the machines out of the schools, although uh, family consumer science is alive and well here in Vermont, but um, the opportunity to teach sewing to a younger audience, you know, typically kids will start in middle school, which is sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, to start them younger and just give them that base knowledge of being able to sew or operate a machine is something that if they really like it, they can just add on, you right. know, and 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 run with it. But also the art of hand sewing and right. learning how to mend things and take care of things because you know, it's inevitable that you're going to get holes in your clothing or your buttons will pop off or yeah. you know, things will happen. Oh, so, uh, yeah. Yep. Right. So that's something that we're really exploring right now. And the greatest thing I think is that my two kids, um, you know, Rangers in second grade and Ava's in well, fourth, um, that they want to help teach as well to their peers. How cool. So, yeah. Okay. That's so good. So that, yeah. So where do you see your business going? Like it, ideally like a couple years out, what, where would you like to be with your business? Like how can we support you and, and um, help you get to where you'd like to go? I would like to um, let's see. So I really would like to explore more with teaching, with um, teaching sewing and being able to teach how people can mend on the cheap. Yeah. Um, being able to maybe use clothing to mend clothing, you know, uh -huh. not having to go and buy brand new fabric, but using things that you have uh -huh. um, and being able to um, alter your clothing slightly. I'm not talking about where you need a fashion design degree, but um, being able to make clothing fit a little bit better. Um, and also um, just carrying on with the memory blanket. And so I really think that um, once we get rolling with our blankets and it, the word gets out more mm -hmm. about what we offer and, um, and the quality of the product that we have, I think that, um, it should be pretty self-sustaining, <laughs> you know? Oh it's yeah. I'm just so awesome. excited for you. I mean, so the, you know, we didn't touch upon it, but, um, I think that your production process needs to be shouted out. I mean, one of the reasons why your product is affordable is because you figured out this process that helps you get there. Can you speak to that a little bit? Well, the process, so you mean the, the people that we have working with us or? Yeah. Yeah. And just, you, you know, delegating. So you're not the one and yeah. Right. right. And so in order to create this product in the most efficient way possible, we have found um, a group to work with that is in Massachusetts. And so we, you know, the, the worst part was really figuring out the website, being able to have an ordering system on the website that communicated with them. 
Yep. So when you place an order on the website, it will send you the information to send all the information at, into them, into this studio. And the blankets right now, we have a studio here in Brattleboro yep. and a studio in um, Massachusetts. And when the blankets come in, we have this process where, you know, your order comes in with a barcode that you're emailed and then the barcode gets put onto stickers and get stuck on the t-shirts and then they all get cut and sewn layout and then sewn all in the same, you know, the yeah, same. So you way. don't like put, you know, somebody's concert t-shirt on somebody else's fo- right. football jersey. <laughs> that would be I'd be doing that going like, Oh no, I think that the black crows and the Patriots, they don't go together. <laughs> exactly. And that is one of the biggest wastes of time. Yeah for manufacturing and sewing and trying to produce a product is having to stop and figure out, well, wait, was this with this or that with that? So the process that we have is almost foolproof so that you don't mishandle garments. And also you have to, you know, you have to remember that these are people's important garments. You know, these t-shirts are sometimes the last things that people have to remember other people buy. Right. So um, we have really taken the time to create a process that is very thoughtful and efficient. Yeah. Um, in in the Vermont in my Vermont studio as well as in Massachusetts, and um, and it's really been working well. And so that also keeps the cost down because when you're paying people by the hour, you want to be able to make sure that everything is running as smoothly and efficiently as possible. And it's the same with my time. Yeah, um, yeah. absolutely. And how cool is that? And the and, and in addition to making it cost effective, when things are easy to you know when there's a system that's like like super laid out for the people involved, the people who are doing the work are feeling proud and like they like their jobs better because they're not trying to figure out, you know, reinvent the wheel every time they get a new order. So that that's just awesome, Alex. So in addition to providing individuality to children, you're providing this memory uh, service to people from all over the world and good jobs. And, you know, it's just, uh, you know, education. I just feel like um, anybody who's listening to this podcast need to take a look over at our show notes at the rags to riches podcast.com. Check out Alex's um, social media following. Amazing. I, I I'm on mm-hmm. Instagram with you and I just, I love to see your posts come up. They're always so fun. Mm-hmm. And then the website is really cool. And I, I just feel like it's just such a lovely opportunity that you're offering the world. And I, I, I feel like um, you're just going to, ex- you know, this exponential growth to you, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story with us today. Um, I really am so excited to have had the opportunity to connect with you. And I look forward to many years of that down the road. I, I'm going to watch um, Ava in the Olympics. That's my plan. That that is her plan. So hopefully that will happen. So. Cool. You guys keep an eye out for Ava Joyo. Yes. <laughs> Jumping. Yes. Cutie pie from Brattle, Brattleboro, Vermont. Um, jumper, yep. Yeah. Thanks so much, Alex. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Crispina. Hey, so I'm over here and I'm serving you a giant air hug because you just finished another episode of the Rags to Riches Textile Upcycling Podcast. Thank you for being with me. Our music is provided by The Lucky Five. Learn more about them at theluckyfive.com. Our show is produced and edited by Van Dalhiasen. If you want to dive in deep, head over to rags to riches textile upcycling podcast.com. Today's episode of Rags to Riches podcast is brought to you by the Stitcherhood Recycling Society, my online membership community for creative textile upcycling, recycling, and reuse entrepreneurs. Inspiration, shared experience, tutorials, business savvy, and connection to a whole posse of people who understand the passion and intricacies of running an environmentally kind creative textile upcycling biz. Daily posts, weekly stitch hours, book recommendations, group chats, member profiles, and strong connections is what you can expect when you join Stitcherhood. Head on over to stitcherhood.crispina.eco and sign up for a free seven-day trial to see if my Stitcherhood Recycling Society is a good fit for you and your textile upcycling business.